as well. Nick Eide is your Zoom host in that space today. Um, and I would lift up prayers for Pastor Terry and her family. Uh, her mother-in-law, Eric's mom, is in her last hours. And so uh, Pastor Terry is with her family this morning um, as they say goodbye to her. So we just lift up our prayers for, for Eric and for Pastor Terry and for their family today. We're also praying for Danielle, our uh, youth director, who had LASIK surgery on Friday, and her eyes are burning this morning. So we pray for her. I think it's getting better, but you know, um, so we pray for her as she is at home healing today as well. With all of those prayers on our hearts, let us stand and together worship the Lord. We worship today and always in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn is now the Green Blade Rises, number 379. Trusting in God's mercy, let us make our confession now before God and before one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows after us. Bring us into your light today and direct our steps in the ways of goodness that come through the cross of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, and in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take a moment to share the peace with one another in whatever way we are most comfortable. And peace to all of you on Zoom. A reading from Mark, chapter 4, verses 1 through 34. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seeds, and as he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no roots. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so, they, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seeds fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, and some a 100 times. And then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the 12 and the others around him asked him about the parables, and he told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding otherwise they might turn and be forgiven then Jesus said to them don't you understand this parable how then will you understand any parable the farmer sows the word and some people are like the seed along the path where the word is sown as soon as they hear it Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them Others, like the seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But when they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. And still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like the seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, and some 100 times what was sown. He said to them, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on the stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and even more. Whoever has will be given more, and whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scattered seeds on the ground, night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, and then the head, and then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. 
With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. The word of the God, the word of the Lord. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All right, I'd like to invite the children to come forward. Well, Joey, I thought you were going to come up and sit with me today. <laughs> come on down, guys. I've seen you out there. Come on down. Have a seat. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dahlia. How's everybody? Santiago what? Santiago couldn't make it today. Well, it's pretty cold to bring a baby out. How is everybody? Good? Good? I'm wondering if you have a favorite story. Anybody have a favorite story? Yeah, Dahlia? The giving tree. Ooh, good one. Good. Anybody? Yeah? Wings of fire, the dragon of at prophecy? The dragon at prophecy. Oh, you know this one too, Gideon. Okay. That sounds interesting. I don't know that one, but now I want to. Awesome. Is that one of your favorites too, Gideon? Yeah. Hmm? Do you have a favorite? Uh, and you don't, you don't have to say the Bible. Called Ark of a Scythe. Ark of a Scythe? Okay. Scythe. Oh. Okay, very good. Jackson, do you have a favorite story? My favorite story is one with the grasshopper and an the grasshopper. grasshopper. Yeah? And, 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 and the grasshopper, the Dumbo realized he was there for the winter bunny, and they do. Oh, the grasshopper didn't get ready for winter, but the ants did. Okay, well, we know who's smarter in that story. What about you boys down here? Do anybody have a favorite story? What is it? Alec, the series Seekers. You like the series Seekers. Okay, Seekers, very good. Wyatt, Grayson, do you guys have a favorite story? No? No, no favorite story. Oh, Landon. Grayson, do you have a favorite story? No? Any Ninja Turtle books or anything? No? Very good. Harper, do you have a favorite story? Warriors. Warriors? Oh, very good. Okay, so lots of favorite stories. So Jesus told stories when he taught people. He told them stories in parables, right? And these parables were stories. And have you ever read a story that you kind of didn't get at first? It was kind of a puzzle. Yeah? Yeah. So Jesus told these parables, and sometimes we, we don't understand them right away. And I think that's part of the point. I think Jesus says, look, I'm not going to spell it all out for you. I want you to think more. It's a story that makes us think and opens up space for us to, to reflect and use our, our brains, but also to think with our hearts and to look for Jesus. And so he told them stories that would help us to look for him in all kinds of places in the world. And today we look for him with the farmers. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for sending us Jesus, who taught, in, who taught us in parables. Help us to understand them and to seek Jesus through them. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Speaking of stories, I'm not sure if I've told you this story before, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to tell it again. It's uh, one of my all-time favorite stories, and I wasn't even there. When my nephews were about two years old, Nick's parents were over at his brother's house, and they were having supper and just spending time together, and it was time to put the boys to bed, and probably all four adults helped to get these two two-year-old boys into bed, right? Tucked in with their blankets and their pacifiers and their read them books and turn the nightlight on and give them a cup of water, right? All the things that you have to do to get two-year-olds into bed. 
Finally, the adults were sitting in the living room down the hall from the boys' room, and the boys were still fussing a bit, right? But the adults were ignoring them, hoping they'd go to sleep on their own, because isn't that the hope of every parent of toddlers, that they will just for one night go to sleep on their own? Right? And so the adults were talking and laughing and the boys were kind of talking to each other a bit too quietly at first. And then all of a sudden, one of them cried out from down the hall in this little two-year-old voice, can't you hear me? Don't you people have ears? <laughs> right? Isn't that the best story? I just love that. Uh, if you had to sum up one half of the meaning of today's parables, that would be a good place to start, right? I think if Jesus were walking the earth today, he'd steal that story. He'd market it everywhere. He'd put it on banners. Can't you hear me? Don't you people have ears, right? Over and over again in these 34 verses that Beth read, thank you very much. Jesus exhorts the people around him to not only listen, but to hear what it is that he is saying to them and what it is he is showing to them about the kingdom of God. In the chapter that we skipped, chapter 3 of Mark, Jesus was busy calling the 12 disciples, naming them, forming them as a group, and thus establishing the foundation and the purpose of what was to become the first church. In chapter 4, what we read today, Jesus gives that little church then and now very clear direction. We have one thing to do. Scatter the seeds of the kingdom. Scatter the seeds of the kingdom. I don't know about you, I have this vague memory of when I was a kid and my mom and I and probably my little sister were planting something in our little garden along the side of the house. And I just remember that it was painstaking because whatever it was we were planting, maybe beans, I think you have to plant beans this way. We had to put our finger in the dirt, make a little hole, take the seed, put the seed in the little hole, and then cover it up real gently. Then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. Maybe it didn't have to happen that way. Maybe my mom was doing that parenting thing where you draw an activity out for as long as possible and keep them entertained and occupied. Well, this was not the way that the farmer in the parable sowed the seed. Right, the farmer went out and he just tossed it here and there and over there and everywhere, right? Without any care at all. He wasn't even careful as he threw that seed all over the place, right? Some landed on rocks. Hello, you can't see the rocks? Right, some landed on weeds, some got eaten by birds. Only a quarter of it landed on good soil. And yet, that farmer ended up with a bumper crop. It multiplied 30, 60, and a hundredfold. The farmers in the crowd knew that's not how you get a crop like that, scattering seed willy-nilly all over the place, right? You have to do careful cost-benefit risk analysis. You have to check the farmer's almanac and watch the weather channel with religious fervor so that you plant at just the right time in just the right spot. The really beautiful thing, the good news in this story is that God's economy doesn't work like that. And God says in Isaiah 55 verse 11, my word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. And so God is willing to risk a lot more than we are usually comfortable with in order to spread and grow the kingdom of God. Amen? Can't you hear me? Right? Don't you people have ears? We, church, have received the secret, the mystery, the treasure that is the kingdom of God. And it is befuddling. No mistaking, right? It makes no logical sense most of the time. 
The kingdom of God is utterly unexplainable. It is mystery. It is mystery that we experience, mystery that we encounter. The kingdom of God, God's grace and mercy and justice are things we only see and only understand with the eyes of our hearts. And as we share in our own words, in our actions, this same grace and mercy, God's word, God's kingdom is sown into the hearts and the lives where we scatter. But we have to scatter. And the truly beautiful piece of this is that all we're called to do is scatter. We're not responsible for the growth. Doesn't matter if we get the words just right. Doesn't matter if we get the words all wrong. Doesn't matter if we stutter or if we don't have all the answers or if we're not 100% sure. What matters is the sowing. Jesus says, keep sowing, keep sowing. I've got the rest. I've got the rest. In another parable today, Jesus says the farmer sowed the seed and then he went to bed. In the morning, the same farmer woke up, got out of bed, and lo and behold, that seed had grown, right, without any help from the farmer at all. All we need to do is sow the seed, and God will take care of the growing. What an awesome thing. Did you know more than 10,000 seed samples for over 300 species of plants are stored in a secure vault deep inside a mountain on a tiny Arctic island near the North Pole? Yep, okay. Well, you're all smarter than me. That global seed vault stores the seeds of life, doesn't it, right? It holds them. Should everything else be lost to catastrophe, those will be there. And the crazy thing is, is that incredible care has to be taken so that those seeds don't begin to sprout, right? Because that's what seeds do. They grow. God did not design them to remain dormant. Sitting still is not normal seed behavior. God made seeds to grow and multiply. God designed seeds to produce plants that produce fruit that produce more seeds. It's an incredible, beautiful part of our creation. And so it's hard to keep a seed from doing what God has purposed for it. It contains the potential for abundant life. It offers hope for a brighter tomorrow, a hint of a promise still to come. And all we have to do is scatter them. Even if all you have, Jesus says, is a mustard seed of faith, Jesus says, scatter it. The mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds, and yet it can grow 20 to 30 feet tall and 20 feet wide. Some people call it a weed because certain varieties have the capacity to just take over everything. They just sort of explode. If we have a mustard seed's worth of faith, we can explode God's grace and mercy all over the place. My brother had a friend who didn't know Jesus didn't know anything about God's love and mercy and grace. And when he stayed overnight, he'd get dragged to church with my family. My mom told me a few years ago what she said to my brother was, you sit on one side of him, I'll sit on the other side. And we'll just sit real close to him and like just rub shoulders, right? And pray for him while we sit there in church. And that grown-up man today has incredibly deep faith because my mom was willing to rub shoulders with this kid, was willing to scatter the seeds of faith here, there, and everywhere, and then trust that God would do what God does. Where will we be willing to scatter seed? What risk will we be able and willing to take to do so? Three quarters of the farmer's seed throwing didn't pan out, right? How much risk are we willing to endure in order that a quarter of the seed we sow will land on good soil and God's kingdom 
will grow in our world? How far and how wide will we scatter the seed of the mystery of God's grace and faithfulness? Who will you invite? Where will we shine the light of God's love? All who have ears, listen and hear and scatter. Amen. Please stand and join me in the statement of belief. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus 
crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Let us pray. Holy God, you became one of us that we might see and know you. And yet when Jesus speaks to us in parables, they feel like riddles that we don't always understand. Open the eyes of our hearts to the truth of your word for our lives and your world. Place the mystery of your kingdom into the core of our being and lead us to encounters with you that will assure us of your presence and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you speak and your word is accomplished. Fill us with your light that we might have courage to live as your disciples in new and strengthened ways. Give us words to share what we know in our hearts of your love and grace with those around us each day. Give us courage to risk scattering the good news of your kingdom in places where it might not take root, and then help us to trust you for the growth of that good news. Keep our eyes peeled for the abundance that only you can grow. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, we pray for all those lives that are marred by illness, scarred by sorrow, seared by grief, and submerged in doubt. Lay your healing hand upon them and restore them body, mind, and spirit. We remember especially Pastor Terry, Eric, and their whole family as they spend the next hours and days facing, experiencing, and coping with great loss. And we pray for Kyle and his family. Losing your home is hard and harder in these cold months. Keep them safe and their spirits lifted. We lift up those closest to us dealing with illness, injury, and disease in all stages. Hold Barbara and Loretta close as they live with the physical, mental, and emotional hurts of cancer. Be with Frank and his chronic leg pain, Danielle and a longer than expected recovery from LASIK, Alice and her pneumonia, and Jackson's friends, Jeleni, Santino, Greta, and Thea. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, and when our bodies are hurting, we both pray for healing and thank you for the wisdom and skill you have given to doctors and scientists. Let that knowledge provide answers for Linda in her ALS clinical trial. And thank you for that wisdom, giving Jerry the all clear to find joy in travel. And of course, we praise you for life. New life for the families of Allison, Sheridan, and Danny. Lydia's five-year-old life, growing, learning, and exploring our amazing world and Alice's 97-year-old life, full and well-lived. Thank you for every stage of life. Lord, in your mercy. As we come to your table to feast at the banquet of your grace, we give you thanks for the gift of this perfectly imperfect community, where we are filled with your joy and peace and comfort. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, we lift our prayers in trust and thanksgiving laying them at the feet of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we come to God's table, now we hear these words of good news and life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those communing with us on Zoom this morning, Receive this gift with these words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. 
For those here in the sanctuary, you're invited to come forward, receive the wafer of bread and the cup of red wine or white grape juice. Empties can go in the baskets at the tops of the aisles. God's table of grace is prepared and all are welcome. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. 
God, you are a God of incredible abundance. And with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you unite us with Christ and you make us one with all your people. We pray that you would send us forth now in the power of your Holy Spirit, that we might proclaim your redeeming love to all the world. We pray this in the name of the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and sing our closing hymn. This little light of mine, number 677. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.